Thank you, Chair. Um, I have a list of questions that I don't want answered now, uh, so just please note them and respond by next week. And please don't respond literally at 11 o'clock tonight before, if you can get back a reasonable time. And then I have two or three questions at the end. I have to say, I have people have been in touch with me um, from RT and um, I have concerns in relation to uh, what they're telling me. So first set of questions um, are for the department. I want to know the following uh, by next Wednesday. Um, on the 21st of June, the DG was suspended. When were the department notified of that? By whom and in what manner? And when was the minister then informed of that? By whom and what manner? Please don't provide a generic answer now, specifically in that order as I ask. Secondly, the DG resigned on June 29th. Again, who in the department was told by, about that? By whom in RTE and in what manner? And when was the minister told this? By whom and in what manner? The Tuberty payments, same question. When was the department first told about this? By whom and in what manner? When was the minister first told this? By whom and in what manner? Uh, the issues in relation to Mr. Collins resigning, I think my colleagues have outlined that. We all can draw our own conclusions. It's pretty obvious. Um, next uh, question relates to um, the minutes of the executive board for the last five years. I asked for these. Um, they haven't been provided. You said you had to redact them. You've had four and a half months to do them. Can we have them all by next Wednesday, please? Um, you said there was no gifts register which I've, since 2017, which I find absolutely amazing. So please, will you write out to all employees of RTE asking them from 2017 to 20 to current date in relation to gifts, um, because no gifts register in RTE is just beyond comprehension. I asked a question myself in relation to the last five years, flagship shows said it was uh, how many times did RT uh, presenters or people working for RT or paid by RT appear on such flagship shows. Um, you said it was too difficult to provide that. That's complete rubbish. It's Friday and Saturday night, more or less. Um, so please can we provide that as well because I want that audited because the public wants it audited to see how all of this uh, kind of cosy re relationship has manifested itself and how it's going to change. And if it's changing, because there's a big, there's a big issue actually for the public. Um, employment, uh, free, there's a freeze on employment which has been announced. Um, can I ask, uh, are there two freelancers working in the Late Late Show um, corresponding with other people doing the same jobs? This may, may or not be accurate. Please answer if it is, and if so, why? Um, in relation to the um, Toy Show, the musical, um, obviously there's a review into this, I respect that. I don't blame RT for trying things. It's just the amount of money you put into this was absolutely ridiculous. Um, the producers in relation to this, uh, what are they doing now, uh, considering that um, uh, they were involved in that? Um, my next question is in relation to uh, the whole issue of that team's meeting and that famous tripartite document. I've taken a different angle. I agree with all my colleagues. This is a really, really serious moment for you, Mr. Backhurst. Serious, serious moment, okay? Um, the first thing I want to ask is, Ms., uh, the Secretary General of the Department, and very short answer please, do you believe that RTE should provide the Public Accounts Committee with that document? I think uh, RTE has to make its decisions with regard to the, or, the we, we have the Minister has encouraged RTE to be as open as possible with, with both committees, and I think they have been very open and they have provided a plethora of documents as, as everybody has acknowledged. But I do think they also have to make decisions um, having regard to all factors, financial, legal, and operational. Okay, and so I can't second guess them on that. Okay, like, but you, so do, you are transposing that the minister believes that they should be as open as possible. That's fine, absolutely. I actually don't, I, I'm kind of caught for yeah. time. Um, I came in here very open mind, despite, and I think to be fair, up until now, Mr. Backhurst, you have done a reasonably good job. However, this is a pivotal moment for you. And I changed my stance today, literally in the last hour, on the basis of the response you gave to the chair this morning, at the very, very end of the contribution. Because you said, uh, when he asked, and we said we compelled that document, and uh, we've articulated why it's so important. Uh, we, we will stand ready for that. This is too confrontational. We'll stand ready for it. Second thing you said is you'd like to see our legal advice. This isn't a two-way relationship. 
it's a two-way relationship in relation to being courteous, in relation to how we uh, respect one another and support one another. It is not a two-way relationship as regards you get to see our legal advice, because you don't. Because this is the Oireachtas. We're the people elected. We're the people who have to vote on whether we give you money. The taxpayers are watching this. So you don't get to see our legal advice. You should withdraw that. Right? This is a pivotal moment for you. There's a moral issue here. Right? My colleagues have articulated better than I can. But I'm telling you this. If it ends up in a scenario whereby this goes through, where we have to compel this, it could end up legal, it could end up in the courts, your position won't be tenable. I'm sorry. I actually think you're doing a good job up until now. I think you need to reflect. In fact, we're taking a break soon. I think you need to reflect during that break. Because I don't believe in a scenario where you should be in and out of here every couple of months. I actually want it to end today. But it can't end until this is provided. Because the worries and concerns of this committee and the people watching are so severe that if you do not provide this note, I think yourself, Mr. Lynch, and others will have serious issues into the future. Um, you can respond to that and the next question. I want a breakdown of the roles whereby people are given a VER, or, or sorry, voluntary redundancy, VP. I want the roles, I believe, even with the legal advice you've given, you can do that for us. Which I find the legal advice, I read it last night, I find it ridiculous. Because to be honest with you, we're all paid by the taxpayer. Technically, the people at Tipperary elect me, they're my bosses, but really we're paid by the Oireachtas. Am I going to go to the Oireachtas and say, by the way, don't want any of my, um, how much I'm paid, public? Doesn't watch. Next and last issue, which you can respond to all then. When the chair was in here, um, when the chair was in here um, on in relation to uh, payments for or the salaries of the of the top 100 uh, people in RTE on June 29th, the chair said she would provide that. Now, you've regaled from that. But I have a bit of bad news for you. You report to the chair. She's the most senior person in the organisation. She made a commitment here in this committee that she would provide that. Nothing outranks that. You don't outrank that. Any information you give us subsequently doesn't outrank that. And she hasn't withdrawn that. So that information has to be provided. So I'd like to respond in relation to the very serious issue with regards to that tripartite, uh, the issues in relation to those uh, uh, salaries, and also in relation to uh, the pensions. Uh, on the document, Deputy, I've heard exactly what you say, and I have full respect for this committee and for the Oireachtas. I also have a responsibility to lead this organisation and to maintain the integrity of this organisation and its independence going forward. And that's, that is ultimately my responsibility, and I'm answerable to the board on that. Um, fully respect the, the committee. We've, as, as you know, we have spent a significant amount of the summer furnishing thousands of documents to this committee and to others. Um, so we're not being instructed, we are being as cooperative as we can do. But the, where there is a point of principle at stake, um, I'm afraid, um, you know, we've discussed this at length and that is a point of principle and um, uh, I don't think I have anything more to say on that. On the top 100 salaries, we have published them without names following legal advice, which you'll have seen in the Arthur Cox letter. We publish the salaries and the type of jobs um, of those people, and I, I think when the chair, I'm happy to talk to the chair about it again. But it, she's well, it's the chair's position. In fact, yeah. sorry, no, but she outranks you, so yeah. I think she's yes, she, the, she committed to it and it hasn't been provided. Well, we have provided the top hundred salaries just without names, deputy, <coughs> which is following the advice in the Arthur Cox letter. Well, that's sorry, she made the commitment that hasn't actually been overridden. Well, I'm sorry, I'll go back to the chair and talk about that. But she's seen mm -hmm. the legal advice. Well, as well. actually, yeah. as it currently stands, four mm -hmm. months later, the information from the chair hasn't been provided. 
well, we have provided the salaries of the top 100 without you names, deputy. Saying. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, but you also know that we've had a number of individuals in that list come to us before we even, after that was said, saying they do not want their salaries provided. I, and, didn't, and, provi I didn't make the commitment. The chair made the commitment. Well, I'm afraid I can't speak here for the chair, but we've spoken about this, and she accepts the legal advice from Arthur Cox about the GDPR ramifications. This committee's record is what it is. Well, we, okay. I'll ask the chair to... Right. Uh, sorry, there was the third one, the pensions. Sorry, what was the third question? Pensions. Sorry, sorry I, didn't find, I didn't hear that question. The, the issue is in relation to... You, given the, you, you told us the volume of people who got voluntary redundancies under the two packages. Yeah. When you never provided us with the actual roles or names or anything. Uh, this, well, I think the details of the voluntary exit packages will be, will be in the independent report, if that's what you're asking, Deputy. But we asked previously, so can you at least provide us with yeah, the Yeah, we'll go away and look at what you asked for, Deputy, yeah. yeah. yeah well, can I, sorry, provide, Deputy, can, can, I, can, can I just ask one thing on the list of information you've asked for? Some of this is obviously very significant and goes back many years, and particularly if we're to ask staff going back to 2017 for details, very happy to do that, but I just would like to try and um, maybe we can discuss the exact timetable of that, because... That it involves well, the, 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 the issue actually, the only one that's of significance mm -hmm. going back is the actual executive minutes, which yeah. now have had four and a half months to provide them yeah. with. Well, we'll I'll, I'll ask whether that's got you, Deputy. Thank you. Thank you. 